After the American Civil War, a government agency was formed to assist Reconstruction called the Freedmen's Bureau. The war had liberated nearly 4 million slaves and destroyed the South cities, towns, and agriculture-based economy. Tens of thousands of black and white citizens were dislocated from their homes. Administered by the Department of War, the Bureau was primarily staffed by ex-Union military officials and also supported by Northern aid groups. Historians have long debated the extent to which the Bureau was successful in a vast range of civil duties aimed at helping Southern society navigate the complexities of a new social order. The Bureau established state and local offices from which agents issued food, clothing, and medicine, supervised labor contracts, provided legal representation, promoted education, secured bounty payments, negotiated land disputes, and investigated racial hostilities. Some historians have argued that the Freedmen's Bureau undercut black freedom by minimizing social and political change. Others have viewed the Bureau as fundamental in tearing down the old order and helping blacks claim equality before the law and opportunity to the land. The Freedmen's Bureau records are an extensive primary source for investigating the activities, policies, and interactions between former slaves, local white citizens, and Bureau officials. At a time when race relations dominated politics, work for the Bureau was made more difficult by lack of presidential support by Andrew Johnson and misrepresentation in the media. Because of the diversity and complexities of Southern society, a top-down view does little to reveal the success or failure of the Freedmen's Bureau. Up until the 1950s, the prevailing view of Reconstruction was sympathetic to a Confederate interpretation, which maintained that those who supported equality were ignorant of the realities of Southern life. A much more complex view of Reconstruction, economic, political, race, and class relations emerged when historians re-examined the work of the Freedmen's Bureau and Reconstruction presidential politics. In recent years, historians have delved deeper into the papers of local agents, to study detailed accounts of specific communities and the experiences of ordinary men and women. Broad prosperity, a large slave population, and widespread slaveholding sharply distinguish Middle Tennessee from the Eastern Highlands. Yet the absence of dominant plantation-style farming set it apart from West Tennessee and the Deep South. Six of every ten heads of free families in 1860 called themselves farmers, farm laborers, or overseers. And of these, 63% owned the land they farmed. Great plantation farms existed and contributed greatly to the overall economy. However, the greater wealth was in the hands of middle-class farmers. The invasion of Middle Tennessee by Union forces in 1862 introduced the destruction and chaos of war and drastic social change. Middle Tennessee slaves were in a unique situation to emancipate by their own free will. Most slaveholders resisted the self-emancipation of their slaves. Therefore, slavery and freedom existed simultaneously, with some slave owners ratcheting up their hold. Fear, distrust, anxiety, religious zeal, and the application of violence quickly emerged. In 1863, the recruitment of black troops became official federal policy, creating an influx of migrating ex-slaves called contrabands, which collected near military outposts and urban areas. The breakdown of society caused slaves who remained with their owners to test boundaries. White slave owners began experiencing disobedience or refusal to work, as well as theft, disloyalty, vengeance, and in some cases, physical assaults. The war had ruined Middle Tennessee's agricultural economy and dissolved its racial and class distinctions. The Freedmen's Bureau began operation in Tennessee in July of 1865 under the command of Brigadier General Clinton B. Fisk. The state was divided into sub-districts with headquarters in Nashville, Memphis, and Chattanooga. Fisk immediately established bureau courts, hospitals, and medical and food ration dispensaries. 
Murfreesboro was the center of bureau activity in Rutherford County with similar offices in Columbia, Franklin, Gallatin, Lebanon, and Pulaski. A large contraband camp existed near the Union Army garrison outside of Murfreesboro. Some of the first bureau records were between military generals. H.P. Van Cleve to M.D. Whipple, June 21, 1865. Complaints are made daily to me by colored men and women of acts of fraud, cruel treatment, and oppression practiced upon them by white citizens for which they can obtain no relief from the civil authorities. Truly, they cannot be left to the tender mercies of their former masters. In a letter titled Employers to C.B. Fisk, August 24, 1865, white citizens complain about the actions of their local agent, Mr. John Siege. In our opinion, it is a disgrace to General Arms to enforce his decrees, that in his deliberation he admits Negro evidence and excludes that of the employer, that he permits the laborer to terminate his contract at pleasure, compelling the employer to make full compensation, that his whole course is unjust and oppressive to the employers and productive only to the demoralizing influence upon the laborer. In a labor contract, from February of 1866, Agent Sage is more explicit. We, the undersigned, freed laborers, agree to work faithfully and obey all his instructions in good faith, and in case we leave his service before the expiration of this contract, provided we are not driven off or maltreated, we are to forfeit all wages due to us at the time of leaving.